So folks, make no mistake, old Donnie's meltdown is only just beginning. You might think to yourself, okay, it's been a few days since the contest, it's been a few days since he and all of his handpicked candidates blew it big time, but he's going to start calming down. Nope, it's getting even worse, and he continues to ruin the lives of his own supposed loved ones. We've already talked about how he was flipping out at everyone around him, specifically on his wife, because apparently she was one of the people that recommended he pick Dr. Oz. But now he's not only ruining his youngest daughter's wedding, ruining it and refusing to attend some of the events, just being a giant cranky baby while it's supposed to be the happiest day of her life. Life, but also he's ruining the rest of the kids lives because his political failures are legal failures for them and this is all while people continue to hammer him specifically on the right for causing a civil war within his own party and for being the biggest loser let's start with these civil war comments because very clearly the right wingers are begging him to shut up and go away but he's not listening you know, in the big missive they put out on Truth Social, his version of uh, Twitter that he owns, uh, he says uh, that the uh, Don DeSantis uh, should be saying, uh, should not be saying things like, I'm focusing on my next election for governor. Uh, Ron DeSanctimonious is playing games. The fake news asks if he's going to run for president. And he says, I'm only focused on the governor's race. I'm not looking into the future. Well, in terms of loyalty and class, that's really not the right answer. So he went on to say he's an average governor, which he's not. He's one of the best. Uh, and it's true what he said about his nominate, his push for his nomination, his push for his governor's run uh, was really fueled by Donald Trump, no doubt about it. Yeah, that's what that's what makes it tough, because loyalty right. is important. I mean, he did take right. Ron DeSantis over the line. But like, for example, Marco Rubio was mentored by Jeb Bush, but he still ran for president. Right, the right. Bushes were upset by that. But to me, it's not a civil war, Will. It's um, remember when they're all on stage, they want to kill each other. For, for, they're going to try to kill each other in the primary. But the timing's bad. The timing is is uh, is not good for the party. If you're a team first player, you wait for Herschel to get through with this. You maybe even and if you're smart politically, you wait for Christmas to be over because there's no rush. It's not like you're going to get more money now. And the thing is, Ron DeSantis keeping his powder dry. He never said he's running. In he's fact, there was said, a story in Axios saying yeah. he's not going to run. So there's no reason for it. And the thing is, too, is that Glenn Youngkin might be running, but he praised Ron DeSantis. And they might be going at it again. Mm -hmm. And I thought uh, Mike Pompeo did the same thing in praising Ron DeSantis. They might be running against each other. There's just no reason to fight now. No, I agree. Again, this is, this is unique, guys. Donald Trump's controversies like this were almost never covered by Fox. When he would trash Republicans that weren't out and out like rhinos, quote unquote, like a Cheney, they would just ignore it. They would not lean into the controversy. So when Trump would give some passing remark against the DeSantis type, they wouldn't really go out and amplify Donald Trump or celebrate his attack on a fellow Republican. They would just sort of ignore it, but they wouldn't defend the, you know, the victim of the attack. Now, Fox really does seem to be defending all of these people that are being attacked by Donald Trump. They're not necessarily coming out in 100% saying DeSantis is our guy for 2024, done and dusted, c confirmed. But what they are doing is sort of saying, look, this guy's likely the future, Donald, and we're about more than just you. So if you're going to trash our cash cow into 22, 24, 26, 28, whatever, we're not going to tolerate that any longer and it also comes at a time and here's a little good super cut of all of these GOPers some of them Trump or some of them not but all of them conservatives saying he's a big loser and he's done and dusted so this is what Donald Trump is waking up to today it is the second straight day that Rupert Murdoch's New York Post has taken aim at him Trump says that he is not to blame for the midterm performance but some high profile Republicans they simply don't see it that way Almost every one of these Trump endorsed candidates that you see in competitive states has, have lost. And it's a, it's, a, it's a huge loss for, for Trump. I think it sends a message to the country, along with some other states, that this is truly a pivot point for the Republican Party. Uh, this is a time that Donald Trump is no doubt in the rearview mirror, and it's time to move on with the party. It's time to move on with candidate quality. It's an opportunity to reassess what Trump's role is inside the Republican Party, and are people willing to stand up rather than caving in on him? The question is, does the rest of the Republicans have the courage to stand up to Trump, or do they once again acquiesce to him? Because 
We all know him. He's not going to take the blame for this, uh, at least in his own mind. This is certainly a rejection of the MAGA base. I think Governor DeSantis did it incredibly well in Florida. He just knocked the, the cover off the ball there. Um, and I think people are now saying, OK, we're moving forward. And if you just look at the, the Trump versus DeSantis stuff today, uh, it's a heck of a lot different than it was just three months ago and definitely a year ago. You know, I think Governor DeSantis is the biggest single winner of the night, and he will almost certainly become uh, the rallying point for everybody in the Republican Party uh, who wants to uh, move beyond President Trump. I know he's tweeting or he's posting yeah. on, on his website about he personally believes he was successful, but Republicans themselves were not on Tuesday night. Right. It was it was for some people it was disappointing, but I did well was essentially his tweet. And, th and that's also not true, by the way, like he did well in some places. Um, privately, according to multiple people I talked to, he was very angry. Uh, the focal point of his anger was the Oz race in particular, because that was not a natural fit for him. And he was convinced to do it. And of course, he never takes responsibility for any of his own decisions. It's always that somebody, some, some staffer tricked him. And I think, Caitlin, to your question, this is something that I heard a lot of complaining about from people around him yesterday. You know, his, 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 his aides who are in his world, paid aides, are all insisting Nothing's wrong, status quo, everything goes forward. Um, other people are saying, how many years are we gonna spend blaming it on staff? So you can get a sense there, one from these people, but also Haberman sort of noting that he's freaking out right now, absolutely freaking out. Because here's the thing, people are starting to realize something. Conservatives are starting to realize what we've been saying to them all along that yes donald trump has a significant base it's undeniable that the man is very popular with dozens of millions of americans that's not a good thing but it's reality and those people are motivated and they are you know a powerful block but they are not enough to win a fair election as we've seen they are not enough at least not anymore and as more and more of the trump people pass away from old age and more and more young people come into the mix and more and more older people start to realize how Donald Trump's policies hurt their kids and their grandkids, his base is shrinking. And so right now, everyone's advice is dump Trump. Listen to this. Free advice to Republicans who are um, getting together for their, their version of an autopsy and what went wrong. What, what free advice do you give them? <laughs> realize Donald J. Trump is a loser. He won <laughs> yes, once in 2016. Fun. Republicans lost in 2018. He lost in 2020. And if you really look at what happened last night, you can point it directly back to Trumpism. Culture pushing nonsense culture wars. That's Trump. Election denying. That's obviously Trump. And limiting access to abortion. Donald Trump delivered that. For years and years, de Republicans were dangling it to get that conservative Christian vote, but they never actually landed that plane. Donald Trump did because he's a one man wrecking machine. And if Republicans don't realize that, then they're just going to keep firing up the base who are super loud, but yeah. shrinking by the day. My mother and father only get two votes. They have five <laughs> grandchildren who hmm. don't subscribe to any of this. Yeah, that's a, that's a very, very good point. And, and to your point, I just love that. That line at the end there was big. Like, I know I, I have people of all ages who watch my channel, and a lot of the, the seniors and older people who watch my channel are progressives, just as progressive as the young folks. But it is important to note that, like, there are a lot of older Trump supporters whose kids and grandkids do not buy what their boomer and older parents buy. And Donald Trump's movement doesn't understand that. And this is why the family's taking the brunt, because Donald Trump doesn't accept responsibility. He doesn't respect the responsibility for his own actions, and so he blames and punishes his wife and his kids and his friends and the rest of his family for his own failures. So this is why, for example, Ivanka and Don Jr. and Eric are in bigger legal trouble than they were before, because Donald Trump's political failures mean that they're not protected either. Because let's be real, they were protected when daddy was in the White House too, and because of his political failures... Now Ivanka is taking the same big legal defeats via the hands of Letitia James and via the corporate fraud company, a case against the company, which will punish them at least financially. All of this is happening. So big losses for Ivanka. Daddy's hurting them and ruining their inheritance. But the most immediate effect is on Tiffany. Now, Tiffany is the youngest adult child of Trump. And I don't know much about her. I don't criticize her much because she doesn't really seem to be part day to day of the Trump schemes. But she is getting married 
and apparently Donald is ruining the wedding because he's a whiny little B-word. And it says here, former President Donald Trump is still stewing about the results of this week's midterm election. And CNN reports that he's in a cranky mood as he prepares for the wedding of daughter Tiffany Trump. Even though the wedding is supposed to be a festive occasion, sources are telling CNN reporter Kate Bennett that Trump's mood has been casting a cloud over the event. Trump's tip- Trump typically likes being the center of attention at his private club, which also serves as his home, but only if he's being congratulated or in the mood for accolades. The run-up to Tiffany's big day has been rough, and as the skies clear and Tiffany's guests descend on Mar-a-Lago, sources say the president is lying low. In fact, Bennett sources say the former president is more interested in preparing for next week expected announcement that he will seek the presidency for a third time so he's basically ignoring his daughter's wedding likely hiding it says here he's hiding away he's lying low probably skipping a lot of the pre-wedding events all of those sorts of things definitely going to ruin at least in terms of atmosphere and in terms of the emotion the moment of that day a man seeing his youngest daughter get married he's never going to have another daughter his youngest little girl getting married and he's going to be a whiny little b-word about it blaming his own family for his electoral and legal defeats instead of the where the blame belongs which is on himself donald trump is a monster i don't care what you think about tiffany but like imagine your dad failing at his job because of his own stupidity, and then ruining your wedding because of it. I think we can all empathize with that. Donald Trump is a monster, and everybody, from his family to his party, is seeing it.